open for us again, uh, just with my after game Brambo. We're going to talk about the cruise I've picked, why I've picked it, and then we're going to go into one other thing I meant to bring, point out about the last game, and just where we're going with upgrades and things like that. So I've picked the Carnage, which is a cruiser that's all about broadsides, which is an odd choice for Chaos. Um, the other choices you have are the Slaughter, which has twin linked batteries, which are like a mixed battery of macro cannons and lances. But the downside to that is the range. They've got a really, really short range and your kind of upgrades are split between them. So like if you get a lance battery upgrade that you can't leverage, you have to get a macro cannon up upgrade as well. It's like it needs double the upgrades to make the weapons effective. Um, and a 6000 range against Imperials just isn't a good idea. Uh, the reason I went for this guy over the other ones, there's one with has a heavy prow lance, and there's another, there's a fourth ship that has two heavy ordnance bays, is because I am going to be fighting Imperials, and no matter how much I avoid it, I am going to end up in a situation where I have a broadside slug match with someone, and this ship to me is probably my best bet at coming out well in that broadside slug match and the reason for that is that the imperial cruisers while strong on the broadsides don't have as many side firing macro cannons as this ship does and it can at least go toe to toe with them so what this has is it has two banks of um, macro batteries on each side they look a bit funny uh, because unlike the imperial ones they're not huge cannons these are more like turrets they still got the same field of fire and the same basic stats they've got a 9000 meter range or 9,000 kilometer range, I think the game's in kilometers. Um, but the one thing you have to be aware of is obviously there's a fall off in damage of macro cannons based on range, but that's fine. They could just sit and do damage at long range and then if they close, that's when it kicks off. They also actually have lances, but I think they're just included they, they don't count as lances because the idea behind a macro battery is it's just a whole host of different types of guns all firing at once. It's not in the, in the, in the fluff of the, of the universe. It's more just they've bolted as many guns to the side of the ship as they can rather than having a, a set way of building it. This guy also has a heavy, mac a heavy uh, macro turret on top of him like these guys with their heavy macro turrets. It's the same gun. So these guys actually have two turrets whereas this guy only has one and you've got to bear that in mind it's something that the imperial ships lack in these dorsal turrets and it, it just is an extra bit of firepower that you might not keep in mind and again same range profile 9,000 meters uh, so all these guns can fire in unison whereas on the other ships you kind of get messed up with ranges um, I would have gone with a lance ship like these hellbringers I would, if there was a ship that just had lances i would have gone with it but there's none that has just straight lances it's just that twin link battery which i will try because i want to see if it's good but i wanted a, a ship that i could rely on first of all so this is gonna be like my dictator the core of my fleet every time um i've got two skill slots on it and i need to think really careful about these because i don't need to worry too much about the shield disruption on this ship i don't need to worry too much about uh jumping for any other reason than to avoid torpedoes and things like that. Um, I'm tempted to get a micro warp drive just because it's good to get out of, excuse me, it's good to get out of bombs with. The other things I'm thinking about getting um, are the enhanced induction cells. And basically that just means that if I need a boost, I can get it faster. Or there's the void shield. I'm not sure about. I'm wondering, I don't know how this does against the Nova Cannon, like if I hear a Nova Cannon firing and I hit this button, or the AI, it's on auto launch, the AI activates, will it stop most of the Nova Cannon damage or not? I'm not sure. There's also the shield recharge rate, which I might want to just try out, but 2.5% isn't a lot, and it's got a two minute cooldown. Um, lasts for two seconds, it lasts for 10 seconds though, so it's not, it's 2.5% it's increase for 10 seconds. Um, you've also got the Plasma Bomb, which is something I don't think Imperials have, which is just a straight up, this does damage in an area, uh, which could be quite good actually. This might be a good thing for this ship to have. I'm going to take it. Um, I'm not sure about the Augur Disruptor. I'm not sure about the Stasis Bomb, although Stasis Bomb plus Plasma Bomb seem like a good combo. Taunt is also very good because it stops people doing things like uh, running away, boosting away, if they're trying to flee. I'm going to take the stasis, but I'm going to try and combo plasma stasis and see how that goes. Uh, the other thing we've got is a crew upgrade for our Hellbringer Mark II. Uh, I've got slaves. I'm going to get squadron sergeant as well because I am relying on the fighters that this thing has quite heavily. So next game will definitely involve the carnage and we'll see what we can do with it. It's it's a bit of a change of doctrine from these ships. Like the Chaos Light Cruisers have a very different, um, I wouldn't say like a, a different preferred play style they're very much clearly made for long range combat whereas this is the crew all the cruiser choices are divergence from that they're made to be much used much further up close but that will do for now uh thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next game cheers bye